Hi, and welcome to our third video in the Get Started with Pi series. I'm Cave. And I'm Jenny. So in the first two episodes, we connected our Pi to the peripherals and went through some of the basic programs that come pre-installed on your Pi. If you're using these videos as a follow along at home guide, then be sure you're using the Raspberry Pi starter kit so your experience will be the most similar to what you're seeing in these videos. Yes, that's a good reminder. So in this episode, we're going to connect the Pi to the internet. The Raspberry Pi Model B included in the starter kit features a 10100 megabit Ethernet controller capable of connecting to any wired Ethernet network port. Mm -hmm. So to connect the Pi to the internet using this port, you'll need an Ethernet cable with RJ45 connectors, kind of like this one. Connect one end to a LAN port on your home or office router or an Ethernet wall jack if you're in a commercial building. So here's a note, sometimes the RJ45 connectors are used for standard telephone service, especially in older commercial buildings. So do not connect the Pi to a telephone jack because you can damage it. Before we plug the other end of the cable into the Raspberry Pi Ethernet port, be sure to shut down the Pi by clicking the power icon on the desktop bottom rail and selecting shutdown. Once the Pi is powered off, unplug the power, then connect the Ethernet cable to the Pi and plug the power back in and allow the Pi to boot up. Another note, if you're connecting your Pi to a cable or DSL modem without a built-in router, or if you're just not sure, it's recommended that you power off the modem and then power it back up before continuing. Any more notes, Jenny? Hey, better safe than fried, Pi. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things we haven't mentioned yet is the LED status lights. If you hold the Pi with the lights in the lower right corner, they indicate from top to bottom, ACT activity will be green when the Pi is accessing the SD card. PWR, power, will be red when 3.3 volt power is present. FDX will be green when the Pi is connected to full duplex LAN. LNK will be green when there is activity on the LAN. And 100 will be yellow when the Pi is connected to 100 megabit per second LAN. So knowing what the LED lights mean can help when you're troubleshooting potential issues. You'll be able to tell if the Pi thinks it's connected to the internet, for example, by the bottom light. Our middle light is yellow, so let's go to the desktop and double click the Midori icon. So did you know that Midori means green in Japanese? Actually, I did not. Oh, um, see? I taught you something. Ho however, it is the name of a lightweight and fast web browser for Linux. Oh, there you go. It's a, it's a very familiar window layout, a thin bar at the top for the address bar, and a back button with most of the screen real estate open for displaying of the website. Enter in a reliable website address such as www.element14.com, then press enter. If the web page loads, congrats, you're connected to the internet. In addition to connecting to a wired network, the Element 14 Wi-Fi accessory may also be used to connect the Raspberry Pi to a Wi-Fi wireless network if desired. All necessary software and drivers are already built into Raspbian, making the Wi-Fi truly plug and play. We'll start in the same way as the wired connection process, by powering down the Pi. So once the red light on the Pi is off, we'll unplug the power cord to the Pi. Then we'll connect the Wi-Pi to an available USB port on the Raspberry Pi. Like Next, power on the Pi by reconnecting the power cord and let it boot back up. Once we're back at the desktop, just go ahead and double click on the Wi-Fi config tool. The first thing we'll do here is click scan, basically asking the Pi to find any wireless networks in range. Once it's found them, this window will display with a listing of networks available to your Pi. Note, setting up Wi-Fi requires that your router is broadcasting the SSID. Make sure you have broadcast SSID set up on your router. This will not work with private SSID setups. So remember, this list of networks is unique to this physical location in nearby wireless networks. So your list is not going to be the same as this one. Good point. I know. Scroll through the list until you find your wireless network then double click it. That will open up a new dialog window. Enter the network password, which is called PSK here, which stands for pre-shared key. Leave the other fields with their default value. Once you enter the password, click add. You'll then return to this window, click connect. It may take a few seconds, but the current status information will update and you'll see your IP address for your Pi displayed. All right, so go ahead and close this utility now. Don't worry, you'll stay connected to the internet. And then we'll go back to Midori and then double click this icon and check to see that we can surf the web. Let's start by going to element14.com. Okay, there we go, we're online. Yay! 
<laughs> if you have any problems connecting, all you do is reopen the Wi-Fi config window and then click the Manage Networks tab, then click Edit, and make sure you've entered the pass key for the network correctly. If you're still having problems getting online, please post a question in the discussion boards. There's a link on this page where the video is posted, and one of our community Pi experts will offer some suggestions for additional troubleshooting. Please be sure to include information about your Raspberry Pi model, what you've done to try to connect, and what error messages or issues you're having. All right, so let's download a video and play it on the Pi. In order to do this, we'll open Alex Terminal, right here, and then we'll use the wget command. To use wget, you type wget in the URL of the file you want to download. Depending on your internet connection, it might take a while to download the file, even though it's a small video. Now that it's downloaded, we can run it with a special video player software included in Raspbian called OMX Player. All right, so we'll run OMX Player in LX Terminal. So you start by typing OMX Player. Then since we're on an HDMI connected monitor, we need to enter space dash O space HDMI so that we'll hear the sound out of our monitor. Then you enter the file name, in this case, devkitsfast.mp4. Just make sure to capitalize all the capital letters because it is case sensitive. Yay! Get Dev Kits Fast, Newark Element 14, your Dev Kit HQ. You can also use OMX Player to play audio files like those that end in .wave or .mp3. You do this by following the same format of OMX Player space dash O space HDMI and then entering the file name you wish to play. Keep in mind, file names are case sensitive. Now that we're online, we should probably tell you about some simple housekeeping tasks you'll want to take on for the care and feeding of your Raspberry Pi. The apps on your smartphone will alert you that there are new updates to be installed. And just like those apps, Raspbian gets updated with patches, bug fixes, and new features. If you remember episode one, Raspbian is the operating system we have installed from the 8 gigabyte noobs card that came with the Raspberry Pi starter kit. You'll want to keep your operating system up to date, especially as you start installing and using other peripherals on your Pi. Many of the accessories that can be added to the Pi rely on the most recent version of the operating system properly function. Yeah, so in fact, one of the first troubleshooting steps you should take if you can't get something to work on your Pi is to download and install the latest and greatest operating system from the internet. Simply run two commands from an LX terminal. Type sudo space apt dash get space update. It might take a while to run, but when it's complete and you're back to the prompt, type in sudo space apt dash get space upgrade. Great. So as soon as that's done, I have some surfing on the Pi to do. And you're all set up to do just that. In our next video, we're going to learn how to interface the Pi to the external world. So what Cabe means is we're going to learn how to hook the Pi up to play a sound when you press the button. It's going to be a lot of fun, and I'm looking really forward to it. <laughs> so am I. Until our next episode, I'm Jenny. And I'm Cabe. Have fun with your Pi. There's a link to start a discussion on this page, and every page in the Get Started with Pi section of element14.com. We have over 200,000 members, including lots of Raspberry Pi experts who will be able to help you out.